All right, so as you can see, this is a pretty big case. Uh, nice little packaging um, by Cooler Master. So let's see if we can go ahead and get it out. The first thing you'll notice is that this has a nice look and nice finish. So two large fans in the front. These are 200 millimeter fans and they are addressable RGB, which means you can use software to program different colors at the same time. So very nice looking front. It is all mesh up front. However, they did go ahead and include another glass panel. That way, if you want to go ahead and switch out the mesh, you can go ahead and do so and I'll show you guys how to do that. So on the top you do have the Cooler Master logo right here. This is also the power switch and this is RGB around it as well. You do have your microphone jack, you do have your headphone jack, you have one, two, three, four USB 3 ports and you also have one USB 3.1 type C. This is another reason why I got this case guys. Now you do have a reset button right here and you do also have a LED right here in the front. Over to the main side, this is where all your good stuff will be displayed. So this is a showpiece for your, your build and and uh, you do have a main screw right here. It isn't a hand tight screw. And once you do open it, guys, go ahead and flip it like that. You can see it leans a little bit, but it won't fall down. And to take it out, just go ahead and pull it all the way up like so. Cooler Master did a good job putting this case together. A lot of cool features in this case, guys, and uh, we'll start at the front. So in the front, you do have mounts. If you guys want to mount radiator, whether it's a 360 or 240 radiator, you can go ahead and mount it in here. This right here is completely removable. So if you guys wanted to mount 360 and go all the way down, you can go ahead and pull this piece out to, to accommodate that. On top right here, this is a universal pump adapter. So if you guys have a liquid cooling kit, which I'm gonna put in, you do have the mount right here where you can mount your pump. You do have a nice GPU support bracket. So a lot of you guys have the sagging GPUs when you put them in horizontally. Well, you do have this right here, which you can put right here. His GPU will sit on top and that will keep it from sagging under the pressure. Now this is adjustable. So it does have some screws right here. So you can go ahead and move this bracket up and down. They also have a railing system where you can mount reservoirs, uh, depending on your personal preference, or you can choose to put SSDs in here as well. So you do have some um, cable management holes that goes to the back three of them you do have ssds and these were actually facing in the back and i'll show you guys how to do that once i get into the build but you also do have ssd mounts right here in the front guys how that will work you'll screw the screws directly into the ssd and then go ahead and just put them down into the grommets right here pretty cool now in the back they do have another cooling fan this one is not rgb i uh, plan to swap that out with a different fan when i get into the build now here's the back of the unit up top left you do have your io shield you do have a thumb screws that will release the the top and i'll show you how that works in a little bit you do have mesh right here guys and you can see it does have some different sliders so depending on what you want to do in the back you might have um, some options to move either a fan or another radiator up and down so depending on what you want to do you do have some flexibility right here in the back further down if you guys are planning to mount your GPU vertically like I'm planning to do you can go ahead and utilize this and use the PCIe riser to make sure everything is nice and safe now you do have your standard PCIe cutouts right here and below you do have your cutout for your graphics card and if you look below that you do have a mesh so rule of thumb you always want to try to mount your power supply with the fans facing down if you do have airflow in the bottom if you don't have airflow it's okay to mount it with a fan facing up that slides back in so this of course pull it out uh, once in a while clean it out it will collect dust um, once the system is running so for the power supply you'll go ahead and screw it in directly to this plate right here and this 
comes off. It is kind of tight right now. Ugh. Ugh. So this piece comes off. You'll go ahead and mount your power supply on here. Screw it back in and use this to secure it on the actual case. Now on the back of the case, you do have another plexiglass, guys. And uh, same procedure to remove it. Twist this down. This part comes down. It will lock in place like that. Then you can go ahead and just pull it up. So another cool thing, and I think this is one of the selling features for this case, is that since this does have glass on both sides, it gives you a great option to hide your cables and make everything look neat. So this right here does pop off. These panels, they pop off as well. As well as this bottom piece right here, but I'm just gonna leave this on for this overview. So as you guys can see, so many cables right here in the back. And imagine if this guy wasn't there to block everything and you had glass, that will essentially show everything. So you have a lot of pass-throughs right here. So you can go ahead and route your power supply stuff, as well as the cable from the front up to where it's needed. And this will keep everything hidden. Now you see underneath, you do have all your cables tucked. Let's go ahead and pull that out. Right. We have a moisture packet right here. We do have a USB-C header, a couple of things for the audio jacks, uh, as well as the USB ports on top. And we'll get into that when we connect everything to the motherboard. But what I wanted to show you guys again is that you do have drive trays right here underneath, guys. So uh, you do have storage options right here. You also do have spots for your SSDs on the other side. So pretty cool. So the last thing I want to show you is just how to remove the top from the case, guys. So you do have a screw right here. It is a thumb screw. However, you might have to use a screwdriver the first time you remove it. So I'm going to unscrew this like this. And you need to take it all the way out. This part comes out guys. So you do have another huge mesh right here. This is removable. You have screws right here. And uh, like I said, you can do other things, add more fans, radiators, whatever you want to do. You do have a lot of options up top. And like I said, I do plan to take full advantage of all the cooling options and features of this case. So this case, again, I will be leaving an Amazon link to my store if you guys want to check it out. Also, I also have all the components I'll be using for this build in my Amazon store, so feel free to check it out. So that was my overview of the Cooler Master H500 case. Like I said, this was the best case for me. This is a mid tower or mid case, an ATX case. I love it. A lot of cool features, looks great. A lot of cooling options, a lot of um, viewing angles where you can view the components components inside just can't wait to start this build so let's go ahead and start putting some components together